Okay, in this presentation what we're going to do is continue on with our probability distribution. So we're down here at number four. State with a reason whether or not x or y are independent. Now, so they're not independent, but how do we know that? For sure. Okay. So what I could do here is I could go right down to the end here. Oh, here we go. So what I'm going to do here is I've drawn out the table again and I put in the marginal distributions there, the marginal probabilities there. So the probability of x equal to 1 is not 0.5. Just going at that first row. Okay. And the probability of y equal to 1 equals not 0.4. Now, the idea of independent events is that the if the probability... of A and B if that's an independent if they are independent events that will be the probability of A times the probability of B okay so if we are dealing with independent events or if X and Y are independent the probability of X equal to 1 and Y equal to 1 should be not 0.5 times not 0.4 and that is to say not point two. Okay, that's if they are independent. So let's just check back to our table and see if that's the case. In this case, yeah, that is actually not point two. Okay, so that that works okay, but that's not enough. We'll have to check it some other places. So let's try probably x equal to two and y equal to two. Okay. Now, if they are independent events, so that that so essentially that one looks okay. That's six over thirty, but that we had it has to work be consistent the whole way through. So not point two times not point three 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 is so that is that equal to the probability of x equal to two and times the probability of y equal to two. Well, that is not point three three three, and the other one is not point two. Okay, or in other words, ten over thirty. Uh, I'll just do it like that. Ten over thirty times uh, one over five, which is two thirtieths. Okay, does that work out? Yeah, looks okay. Now. That's just two cases, and I've actually just sort of picked those two at random. But you might sort of see that there's trouble ahead. Okay. It has to apply to every single outcome. Now, it has applied to some outcomes, but it has to apply to every single outcome. Okay. Now, you might sort of see that if we multiply 0 0.2 by 0 0.33, we should also get 2 over 30 here. Uh, but you, that's what should happen. So we should also get 2 over 30 here. That's just a, so what would happen there. But we don't. Okay. Likewise, we should get 2 over 30 here, but we don't. And we should get 1 over 30 here, but we don't. So it seems to work out in some cases. Okay. And I've picked two cases there where it does work out, but it doesn't work in every case. And that's actually critically important. Okay, that two thirtieths there that should be that should apply pretty much to all of these three cases here: four over thirty, zero over thirty. So if they were if they were independent, this would be two over thirty and two over thirty. Like the four over thirty should be two over thirty, and the zero should be two over thirty. So no, they're not independent. Okay. It has to apply in every single case. Okay, so that was the first part, and now let's look at the last part. The random variables u and v are as follows. Scroll down. The random variables u and v are as follows. Uh, u if x is one and three, and zero if x is equal to two. V is equal to one or zero, depending on whether or not it's one or three. So essentially, tabulate the joint distribution. Okay. So essentially what I'm going to do is have to I have to try to draw out another table here again, very similar to this, and I'm going to base my data on these values here. I'm going to 
so what happens here is that um, I have to reconstruct. I have to construct a brand new table here. So what I'm going to do here is actually uh, u is equal to zero or one, and v is equal to zero or one. So I'm going to use this table to sort of construct in my new table. I'm just going to pause this a second so I can get it set up. So what we have here is we have to sort of pick out combinations. So we have a couple of combinations. So u is 1 if x is 1 or 3, v, uh, v is 1 if y is 1 or 3, otherwise 0. Okay. So what I'm going to do is paint in uh, where x u is 1 and v is 1. Okay. So I'm going to first then paint in these ones. So v is 1 here. Uh, u would uh, u one that's this essentially u one uh, v one u equals one v equals one. Okay, and then the rest is uh, those are those are the one one cases. Now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, the one u equals one v equals zero, and I'm going to put them in here like this. Okay. Now u equals zero. And v uh, v equal to one. I'm just going to put them in r around there, circle them like in red, like that. And then finally, uh, zero and zero. There we are. Okay. So um, there's four different possible combinations there, and I, what I've done is uh, combined all of those combinations there. So um, let's just be clear now. The you. Uh, you, 1 1 is these uh, yellow ones 6 over 30 plus 2 over 30 plus 2 over 30 that is 10 over 30 okay it's the uh, yellow ones sorry that's the wrong way around that should be down here 10 over 30 and it, let's just be clear that was the yeah, I'll just put in the blue there. That was where we had the uh, circle in yellow. So that was the ones. Now the uh, zero zeros are where they're both green. Or so uh, u equals zero, v equals zero. So where they're both circled in green. In that case, what we have there is two over thirty. So I'll just put a little green indicator here, and that is two over thirty. Um. We u is equal to zero, v is equal to one. That is where they are red, circled by red. And that case, so this is uh, x is when x equals two, u is equal to zero. Okay. And when y is equal to one, v is equal to one. So the red ones are the zero one cases. U equals zero, v equals one. So put them in there like this. And that is eight over thirty. And finally, the cases where we have u equal to one and v equal to zero. Add all of them up, and you get. Uh, I think I have a little typo there somewhere. Yeah, I do. That should be one over thirty there. Uh, that uh, overall, that should up, add up to ten over thirty. Okay, so um, just very visual approach there helps. So, so essentially, that's our table. So let's just uh, uh, sort of tot them all up. That is ten over thirty, and that is twenty over thirty. That's the probability u equals zero and u equal to one. This is twelve over thirty and eighteen over thirty. Okay. Now, what we were asked to do is check if this is independent okay so we do something very similar here let's go to the last cell probability of u equal to 1 v equal to 1 should equal 20 over 30 times 18 over 30 if it's independent so what that is to say it should equal 12 over 30 but that's not observed okay it's a sort of what we're doing is proof by contradiction, if you get me. 
So this is what should happen if they were independent, assuming independence. We will get 12 over 30, but that's not actually what we observe. So in this case, they are not independent either. U and V are not independent. Okay. Now, uh, so that's the end of that one. Now, again, what you have to be very careful here is just sort of setting up what each of the four combinations. Okay. Uh, it does actually, uh, it is actually a very good idea to bring in several, you know, these like types of problems, several different colored pens, partly because it sort of helps your corrector, your examiner, you know, help visualize things. So lots of different colors there helps a lot. Okay, that's enough of that.